What's up guys and gals, and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're we'll going to be checking out a title called The Darkest Star. This is sort of answering the question, what would happen if you took Battlefleet Gothic and you turned it into a turn-based game? So instead of being real-time, where you're actively adapting to situations, what if it was turn-based? And it was sort of a gritty, granular, turn-based strategy game where you can fire and intercept missiles, and there's a bunch of different systems on each ships. For right now, the game is a little bit lightweight just due to the fact that it's a combat demo only, but we're going to dive on in and play for about 30 minutes and see if it's something you wanted to check out or pass on. If after watching this you wanted to get the game for yourself, I got a link for you down below in the description. You can also find a link to my Twitch stream on my Discord. Let's go ahead and give one of these demo missions a run. So we've got like a space battle over here. So there we are. All of our ships have jumped into the system and it looks like we've got a bunch of enemies that we've got to deal with. Let's just have a look around the area and get a feel for what this smells like. We've got asteroids over there. They don't really damage ships, but you can't fire missiles and craft through them. We've got IR smoke on that side. It looks like we've actually got a fairly debris-littered battlefield. This is our fleet down here. We've actually got quite a few ships and ones that I've never seen before. I've played through the tutorial, but that's about it. What are these guys over here? Are these some kind of like hydrogen or like deuterium tanks or something that blow up we've got capturable ships over there if we wanted to get a bigger craft it looks like it lines up with the invincible class that we have down here you've got the turn order at the top of the screen everybody's got different initiative based on how small and fast their ship is we started out with the marauder it looks like the marauder has the ability to use point defense it can fire counter missiles it can put down electronic warfare smoke, and it looks like it also has light missile launchers that we can play around with. I don't know if I want to pull forward that aggressively with this craft for right now. Let's maybe, like, wait, and let's bunch up our smaller craft so that they have a little bit more punching weight together. We'll move them on over to there. Turning the ship around does count towards the distance the ship can actually move. So if you need to get to something behind you, you can't pop it into reverse or anything else like that and like beep, beep, like back it up. You've actually got to turn the whole ship around or it'll take you a turn or two. All right, so the enemy is moving and it looks like they have a fighter grouping over there, or at least a group of gunboats that they're lining up against us. Okay, good to know. And then we're back to our turn over here. Now, these guys on this side look to be some kind of, like, Corvettes. Something larger than a gunboat. Let's go ahead and pull them forward in unison because I'm guessing they're going to get back-to-back -back turns. It looks like they've got some specialty weaponry on here. It looks like they've got heavy lasers. They've got anti-shield beams. They've got a standard missile that they can launch at the enemy. We've got jamming beams, so it decreases the accuracy of weapons fired from the enemy ship. So it looks like we've got a nice little taste of sort of, like, electronic warfare here as well you can double move but it's going to end your turn just something to be aware of i will go ahead and fire a missile at him missiles in this game are turn based and they move on the interim there's like a missile turn where missiles will actually take their turn and move towards the enemy you can see them listed right there we don't really have much else that we can do here so i'm going to go ahead and bypass the turn and i'm guessing the ingully is going to be up next the Ingully moved over to there, and the Ingully is going to counter-fire missiles. Okay, good to know. Now let's go ahead and pull this ship forward, and we'll back him up a little bit. With the Terminox, do we have counter-missiles that we can fire over here? We do have counter-missiles, but the enemy's missiles are just outside of our range. So we may have to wait on that deployment. Do we have anything on our left-hand side that's going to be a major threat? Let's go ahead and move forward over to here and bring them up to broadsides. I'm going to have this guy flank around on that left-hand side to create a strong left-hand flank. And then from there, the marauders and the smaller ships will probably hassle from this other side. Looks like we've got Corsairs, Icebreakers, and the, en the Enchilada is up next. The big Enchilada. All right, so with our Corsair, let's move the Corsair up. Does the Corsair have counter missiles? I would really like to do something about the enemy's missile grouping over here. Let's go ahead and fire counter missiles. We have a 40% chance to hit right there. You can take simultaneous turns in this game, which is pretty cool. Uh, so I could fire multiples of these, and they would all act on the battlefield simultaneously. We got a whole bunch of misses right there. We only cut down the missile group by a little bit. 
let's jamming beam him. I don't know if the... Oh, it was ineffective. Okay, fair enough. I didn't know if I could jam the missiles as well or if that would be a good idea. We can fire counter missiles again. Let's go ahead and do it. Every single ship has their own AP that are listed down here along the bottom of the screen. I very much actually kind of like the sort of silence that the game has. We struck out on the last one with a whole bunch of misses. We got three more of the missiles right there. The grouping has been messed with. The icebreaker is in the back. We're going to want to bring the icebreaker up aggressively, I think. It looks like the icebreaker is actually a carrier as well. So we've got bombers. We've got drones. We've got all kinds of little things we can play around with out here. I'm going to bring him up a little bit more aggressively by sacrificing his turn to double move. Just to bring him up into formation against this threat that's pressing right now. Let's see if this brought us up into counter missile range. It did. So fire the counter missiles. Fire the counter missiles. And see if we can shut that down real fast. 40% hit chance on those. Missile group has been brought down, so we don't have anything to worry about on that side. Let's bypass the turn, and then it will be... It looks like whatever... That looks like a station, though, so I don't know if that's going to be able to do a whole lot. They are amassing a lot of fighters on that side. I have my doubts. It says PD next to that, so I'm guessing that's a point defense turret that's just there to keep us from bombing out the station. And then we actually have engagement right here. So let's bring her up. The Birkland is going to go ahead and let's take a look at our abilities here. So we've got angle our armor. We've got counter missiles. We've got point defense lasers. Those are obviously not going to be that much help against like a cruiser. We do have a capital laser though. It's got a 53% chance to hit. I don't know if we want to fire that just yet. It looks pricey. It does 25% damage to shields. It looks like it does 100% damage to armor and 100% damage to hull. Do I have anything else that will mess with their... We have lasing missiles. Fire those. Oh, the lasing missiles aren't inside their optimal range right now. Okay, well, I suppose fire the capital laser. Capital laser's out, and wow! That was the stuff right there. That was the goodies. Good lord, that actually took a chunk out of him, so he lost all functional shields right there, and part of his armor fell off as well. I would brighten up that armor bar. It's a little bit difficult to distinguish from the background. You can see it, but raising the base coloration up to, like, that light gray color on the bottom and then making it almost like a white on top would help out, I think. They actually don't have a whole lot of ships. That makes me a tiny bit nervous about what's going to happen when I go after this station on the side. Like, how is that going to work out? We can fire missiles at him, or we could just pull up and capital laser him again. I guess it depends how aggressive you're feeling. This guy looks like he's a little bit of a healer, too. Like, he can raise up people's shields and basically give them, like, a battery jump if they need it. My missiles are on the way out over there. Yeah, let him feel those missiles right there, too. Put a few more missiles on course. Wow, dude, the missile barrage from the bigger ships. A lot more aggressive and scary than the missile barrage from the little ships, I'll tell you that. All right, well, let's clear a path for that broadside to make its impact. The Zarier over there is doing something, and he's surrounded by pinkness, and that kind of worries me. We have a laser off and away from the point defense turret, or at least from the station. We've also got a jump gate over here that's spawning guys. It may actually be a better idea then, since they don't have a spawn gate over there, to cut left. I didn't realize they were going to spawn from this left-hand side. So we may want to make a strong concerted effort on this left side to get rid of him. Whose turn is it right now? The Marauder. Have the Marauder pull up. What's the range on your missiles right there? Go ahead and fire another batch of missiles. Oh, wow. They've got a pretty good salvo by comparison to the other ships. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and readjust left. Yep. Just touch it up a little bit to the left. You, we're going to have you kind of do the same thing, I think. Unless you've got something that can help out with fighting this guy. It looks like we've got flak shells on him. We've got a few more missiles right there, but mostly just point defense. So it looks like the Janissary is here to help with fighters and missiles mostly. 
Okay, pull the ship to about face, get over to there. Hopefully they don't have any AOE capabilities. That would suck the butt off the universe. Fire another batch of missiles at him, because, like, we have infinite ammo for these bad boys. So, like, why not go with overkill if we can manage it? We've got gunboats. They're coming about. Don't know what that purple blip is right there. I don't know if it's like a space mine or what that might be as we get further on into the engagement. Yeah, I'm kind of curious what those purple things are. No way to tell, unfortunately. We've got a bit of a long haul over that way to go fight with the gate that's spawning enemies. Do you have any kind of like laser weapons? You have an anti-shield beam and a heavy laser. Heavy laser can be fired from right there, but lasers lose accuracy the further out that they are. So let's pull the Terminox in. And maybe I won't about face to the left. Maybe we'll just focus course over here and see what we can get done. We need to get that capturable ship right there, too. If we can get our units to it, we actually add that to our fleet, which is very, very encouraging for whatever campaign or skirmish mode the game's planning on having. And with our heavy beam right here, we're up to a 53% chance. Go ahead and fire it. Heavy beam is out, and we actually have our first splash right there. So all targeted missiles are going to go ahead and disappear. No sound effects as of right now, which is really kind of a bummer. I would say that before you wanted to promo the game, you definitely want to have the basics in there, like sound effects. Uh, this is a debris field. You don't want to fly near it. Debris can damage your ships, and in addition, any missiles that have to cross the debris field will lose a couple of their warheads on the way through. Fighter groups that go through areas like this will also lose a little bit of their grouping on the way through. So we'll want to watch out for that. It looks like they're jumping in other craft. If you look at the top initiative, I'm guessing those are summoning in reinforcements. Okay, well, let's make a push towards anything that might have value over here. We might be able to make it to the IR field right there. I definitely don't want to tip of the spear overextend this guy, though. I've brought the fleet around. And we've got a nice salvo of missiles coming from every single station, basically, to try to hit these guys. Basically, I want to give them stuff to shoot at that's not me. Like, I want to give them lots of pressing issues that they have to deal with right this second. Things that they can't get around. I do have fighters, but I'm going to wait to deploy them, I, I think, until we get a little bit closer. I get the feeling that the Icebreaker is supposed to be our anchor. Like, the Icebreaker and the Invincible both seem to be carrier classes. And so we kind of want to keep them in the center of the formation, or at least to the rear of the formation, so that they can continue spamming out fleets at the enemy that we can sacrifice. I don't know if there's going to be a manpower limit or anything else like that. Uh, but I was just about to say, combat seems very slow. Like, it takes a long time to get to your turn. And so I figured... Maybe I'll boost this up a little bit so that we can actually get into the action. I'm going to start moving the carrier fleet this way. We're going to try to knock this off the map. We're going to about face. We're going to come back for the capturable, I think. And then we'll deal with any threats that come around in that moment. But it's actually fairly impressive once you're spun up and you've got all your little missile groupings with all their little attachment lines. Definitely got like a tactical vibe to it that feels pretty good. I don't really have any missiles or anything that I can fire from this guy. So I would suggest maybe getting fighters out of the bay for right now. That way we have them ready to go. I don't know if they're going to have fuel or anything else that they need to pay attention to along the way. But we'll get fighters out of the bay for right now. And I'll let you know once we make base contact. Alright, so we're starting to get to the forward position here that we were jockeying for. I think we do actually... I can't tell if we have limited uses on these or if it's just the cooldown that's in the top left hand corner. Either way, fire a lasing missile at that guy. There you go, get a nice missile grouping out on stage. We do have small asteroids over here. So we may lose some missiles going through the debris field. But we also have the capital laser on that side. Let's go ahead and fire it. Capital laser is away and it was a hit. We splashed the point defense turret in one shot. So the capital laser is apparently nothing to mess with. It's actually like an extreme shot. And so we should have ourselves a little debris field right there that we have to deal with for a couple of turns. The downside is I did target a lot of missiles on that guy because I figured we'd be taking a lot more fire on the way in. And so we'll see. As we get closer to this guy right here as well, 
this uh, this guy fired a laser, did all that damage to our shields right there with one shot. So we're going to want to close the gap pretty quickly on this side. I don't know if the point defense turrets are actually going to be able to do anything to anything that's not a fighter or anything that's not a... Can I fly through there? Very dangerous to ships, but not to small craft. All right. We may have to swing wide on this one then. Let's swing wide. I don't think we have anything we can target just yet. But bring them back into the fold. I want them kind of like close to the main fleet grouping. I, I think cohesion here is going to be one of our, our big worries. Like we want to maintain it at all costs. We also have a ship that can restore shields. So hopefully I can get him up and moving. This guy's real slow though. Like he's not real quick or spry at getting to where he needs to be. I would say let's be aggressive and let's pull in with the Corsair and see what we can accomplish just by harassing around the outside edges. Big dog. What you got going on for me over here? Big dog can't get to anybody just yet in order to restore their shields. We'll pull Big Dog up a little bit, though, so that he can do that. I don't think I'm going to be advancing too aggressively with the Icebreaker up there, so... We have a shot and a miss. One thing I did notice on the in-between turns when they were kind of, like, wildly firing at me... Um, ...is that if a laser misses, but it crosses another ship in its pass... ...the ship that is the secondary target catching strays also has to make a dodge roll. So your lasers in this game are actually persistent in the game world... So that if they miss their intended target, but your grouping is so tight that it crosses over other targets, uh, they also have to dodge that. It looks like they're going in for a strike right now. They're actually pulling in on the capturable ship. So we may get outflanked here in just a minute, which in my opinion is a little bit worrisome. Let's go ahead and pull the fighters up. I don't know if the fighters are going to be that helpful here. They only have like a light laser. Uh, their lasers are indeed ineffective on these targets. Go ahead and fire some missiles then at him. Uh, the missiles were also ineffective. Okay, so they're too small to actually affect anything on that side. That's just a learning curve thing that I had to figure out. Fair enough. It definitely gives you the feeling of large-scale combat planning, though. Like, it does not feel like a small-scale game, just in terms of the fact that like the amount of movement you have to do just to get into range to do things is definitely something you have to pay attention to. It looks like I can put down electronic war smoke. I would recommend doing that. Let's go ahead and drop a smoke cloud right there. And it looks like we can no longer be targeted inside that circle, which is good because that's a smaller, much more fragile craft. So putting a whole bunch of aluminum in the air to throw people off. Oh, they're firing on the capturable ship. Okay, so they're actually trying to deny me the ability to capture it. I was not aware that that was an option either. I thought that they were dormant and nobody would target them. I thought they were going into capture, basically. And these guys don't really seem to have much that's going to affect these stations over here. Let's bring them out wide, maybe as a guard, for if this fleet decides to make a move. It's going to take Big Dog a little while to get over here, and these smaller ships might leapfrog. In which case, we're going to want to have something along the flanks, and also untargetable inside the E-War smoke. To kind of set like a little booby trap surprise for them. It looks like they crashed one of their ships into an asteroid field. With the Terminox, the fighting's going to be a little hot and heavy for you over here. But let's get you into an untargetable position for the next turn. The Icebreaker is over here. Does the Icebreaker have anything big that I can actually fire, though? Or is this thing entirely a carrier? This thing is entirely a carrier. Okay. Okay. Let's bring him up then, just a little bit, not a lot. We'll deploy bombers. Bombers are out. Hopefully the bombers will have a little bit more bite and a little bit more cut to them when it comes to these turrets. They may also get shot down instantly. However, the enemy has something to think about right now, which is they have like 32 missile payloads headed towards both of their point defense flanks. And so these guys, I don't even know if they can fire on ships, in all honesty. They haven't yet which has me kind of wondering. Let's go ahead and pull up. 
we'll fire the heavy laser. Oh, we can't fire the heavy laser from inside the E-War. Oh, it fires to a broadside. Gotcha. Good to know as well. Okay, pull him back around that way then so that he can broadside on the next turn. So it looks like he's moving over to help out with that station right there. Definitely a jarring transition on the music right there that they're going to want to smooth out with faders and whatnot too to make it sound a little bit better. Little damage to ships. That doesn't matter. I don't want to scuff my paint job up. What direction do my weapons fire? Omnidirectional? Okay. Let's pull you up into main vanguard. We have the capital laser ready to go. 46% hit chance. 52 right there. I'll take the 52. With the 52, we did get purchase right there. It's now down. And so we should be wide open for the bombers to start moving in on the main station, I think. Hopefully the debris field doesn't affect the laser or doesn't affect the missiles too much that are on their way in. What does that do? Rapid reload. So run your system at an increased rate. Oh, so it allows me to fire a lot more missiles on my turn. Gotcha. So he's kind of a bombardier. Okay. What direction do you fire? Are you broadsides? No, you're omnidirectional. Let's pull you in. See if the medium laser hurts this thing. The medium laser did a little bit of something. Will it affect better over there? Yeah, it, it's a little bit better against the PD turrets. All right, good to know. With you, you can fire from right there with a 57% chance. Go ahead and do it. Yeah, show them the whole enchilada. Let them feel it. All right, so we've got a targeting laser. That'll increase your accuracy. Just keep firing. We seem to, we get like a burst here. So it's not like, hey, we splashed it. All right, another one bites the dust. If we can knock this guy out, they've got these like full map turbo lasers, basically, they can hit us with, with these things. And so being able to hit me anywhere on the map while I'm in transit is just like an extra little bit of attrition that I would rather not deal with. And so if we can knock out these big guys, I like that idea a lot. Do we have anybody that needs shield restoration out here? Go ahead and restore their shields a little tiny bit. Get them all patched back up. We do have a capital laser that we can potentially fire that way. I'm not going to say that it's going to hit, though. Uh, we did actually score a lot of hits with the capital laser for a 25%. I'll take it. I was expecting nothing out of that, and instead we almost ate the whole station. What is that? Is that fight? Is that bombs? Big shot and a miss right there. I don't know if that hit. It didn't zoom in or anything. Bombers are out. Can bombers fire from anywhere? Okay, that might have been a waste. But go ahead and readapt the bombers over this way to support basically the flank guard. They're not gunboating that thing. I think they might just be protecting it and then the big one's shooting it. It's kind of hard to say. It's a heavy class ship though. We kind of want to go get it. I might be willing to throw myself headlong into the fray over here in order to go get it. It also looks like their counter defense is not going to be effective during all these fight during all these fighter groups over here either. So we're going to have to figure that out too. We may want to get some more fighters on the field to tie down their fighters or at least give their fighters something to chew on until we take out the hive. Stay inside the E-war field and we'll just wait to see what they do. I'd like to finish and clean up over here before we start going anywhere else. That is a lot of fighters that we have to deal with on that side. Let's bring the fighter group over here as well, I think. We'll just kind of have them mass up. I'm going to start spamming fighters every single turn since it seems to be what their carrier is doing too. I'm going to take a cue from the enemy here. That's a hell of a missile grouping. Let's pull you out of formation, out of the E-War to see if we can get like a heavy laser off on this guy. Oh, that one had a sound effect. Maybe the sound effects are just buggy. I don't know. Maybe the sound effects are like half implemented right now. 
It's kind of hard to say, but down goes another craft. I do like the explosive effect, how there's little pieces of debris and whatnot inside of there that you can see. And now it's time for the full about face to deal with this situation over here. These tanks are explosive, so we probably don't want to fight from in between them. It may be the better idea to splash them now, because it looks like we're the guy that's got to cross them. Or at least get them started, so if the enemy tries to cross them, we have ourselves a little bit of a boobity trap we can play around with. As far as everything else goes, let's bring the Birkland around. Get some larger ships into formation to deal with this situation. I have been spamming out fighters like crazy. So we may be alright on that end. These guys are pretty agile. So I think if I can double move them, I can actually get them back into position pretty quickly. The Invincible is sort of stuck in between a rock and a hard place right now. But I think I can maneuver him around the asteroid field to keep him center grouped. Big laser out and away, and it looks like that was a miss. I didn't see the bars move. That's the only way that I can tell. All right, so who am I controlling right now? Fighters. Good. Let's get the fighters moved on out. We need them in the front of the grouping. Fighters, I figure we use kind of as skirmishers to establish air superiority. At least in some rough way. They've got a lot of gunboats out, though. We may just want to flak field that whole thing. Like, their grouping is really close right now. Which kind of has me thinking. Let's have this little fighter group. What did they... Oh, they skimmed against the edge of that right there. That sucks. We do have one little ship over here. That we may want to tackle. It might be a good idea. How much range do the flak shells have on them? Not that much range. We're going to have to put ourselves at serious risk to get this flak shell off. I don't really want to lead from the front with my, with my small ships. Let's give this guy something to think about. We'll fire some missiles at him. And then maybe like E-War Smoke over there. I don't know if that's going to affect the missiles at all, but we'll E-War smoke real fast just to cover our flank with this dude. I do have a bomber on this side. Bomber may be able to do something over here. Oh, he has to go back and rearm. Okay, good to know. Bring the fighters up to help, I guess. Send the fighters out here. What's the range on those? Oh, we already fired them. Bring the Terminox up and see if we can do anything to this guy. We do have a heavy laser. It looks like our shot is probably not going to hit, though, but we do have an anti-shield beam we could fire at him. Let's just fire the whole enchilada at him. Hey, it did a little bit to them shields. That's all that I care about. Give him another volley. Hey, we got rid of him before he became a liability. Good. They definitely need to put a limit on the amount of groups that you can deploy from one carrier. I don't know, man. That's a lot of ships that have all come from the Endo over here. <laughs> like, he's got he's got a lot of craft in there. Quite a few. Would be my observation. Bring you up. Looks like all the asteroids missed, which is great. I wonder if you destroy the mothership if the whole thing goes down. Like, do I not need to focus fire all the fighters or whatever? I definitely don't want to go into this area. I would prefer not to anyways. I'm trying to sweep and clear it on out. I was hoping that when I shot one, it would set off a chain reaction and save me a whole bunch of turns. I think my main complaint right now is just the amount of time you spend in transit. This is a game that has a lot of downtime where you're just, like, moving ships around. I think they may have actually spaced this map out a little bit too far and missed out on the opportunity to show, like, how punchy the combat is and how many, like, cool things you can do. With a demo, you really want to get people into the action about as fast as possible. Yeah, go ahead and fire the capital laser at the debris field, I guess. This stuff is all just kind of like glaring obstacles that are in my way and annoying me. 
and so I kind of want them to go away now, please. Pull the ship up. Don't really want to go through the debris field if I can help it. We can fire missiles. Yeah, put some missiles on the endo. Let him, let him think about it for a second. Give him something to do over there instead of just like fooling around deploying fighters all day. As a final thought too, let's maybe get that out of the way. All right, down that goes. That's now been removed because I noticed that a lot of my anti-fighter craft are kind of isolated from the rest of the battle group, and I would really prefer that that not be a thing. Like, I would like them to kind of be together with everybody else. You can medium las that down. Go ahead and do it. I don't think the medium lasers have the punchiness to destroy those in one turn. We do have capital lasers ready to go, though. So we'll blast those out of the air real fast. And I don't relish the thought of fighting around a debris field over here, but... It may end up being what's going to happen. Counter missile drones, point defense drones, he tanks, power to weapons. Okay. In an ideal world, what I'd like to do is I'd like to get the capital lasers in range of their carrier and see if I can knock him out of the sky real quick. Maybe I'll have some fun with it too and send some, some fighters out front just to kind of see what... I think I know what's going to happen. I'm fairly positive I know what's going to happen. We've got actually kind of a nasty carrier group over here to deal with. Gunboats have brought themselves into range. That means I need to get my point defense guns up here. Oof. That's a lot of missiles. Okay. Screech on up in there. And it looks like we can fire on the missiles. Or we can fire on the gunboat group itself. Let's fire on the gunboat group. A little bit of damage off. Didn't really accomplish a whole lot. Fire your missiles, too. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Mag dump them. I like the way that little salvo looked right there, too. I sped up the game, so a lot of the effects are getting thrown out with the bathwater right now. But I just found the game was really, really slow to play. We do have counter missiles available, and that is a big missile grouping right there. So it might be a bad idea, but let's pull this guy out of cover. And we'll start whittling down, I think, this missile group right here. If I can find the selection spot. There we go. Counter missiles away. Looks like we got about nine of them. Okay, we've knocked about 14 off their missile group, which is not the worst thing that we've ever done. Do point defense guns do anything against those guys? Sort of. Not really, but sort of. I mean, amassed machine guns, you know what I mean? Like, maybe, maybe not. Maybe bring the bombers in over here. It did something. It wasn't completely useless. And then we've got another fighter group over here that can do something similar. Hey, we splashed the whole group. Nice, dude. I would very much like to not have 900 detachments of gunboats all up inside my b-hole right now. Because it seems like they're capable of firing some pretty nasty salvos. Like, it seems like they put out, like, a big... Basically, they're here to sacrifice themselves to get that missile grouping out. To effectively force you. Let's pull up right here, I guess. I want to try out this flak gun, too. Put the flak on them. Did any of our guys get caught in that flak field? Are we looking good here? Okay, counter missile down that group again. Selectivity can be really... Re oh, I'm inside my range right now. Unfortunate. I pulled up a little too close. 
a little bit too much love and touch and squeezing going on right now. We also have this little threatening group behind us, but they're not very fast, so I don't think they'll be able to, like, drop in on us super hard. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Like, at max speed, I do find that the game drags a little bit. There's a few too many turns that are concerned with just pure movement for, like, seven turns in a row while waiting for the enemy to spam out all their fighters and whatnot. It's been, like, one thing that I've noticed. This guy's being targeted. Since it's your life on the line, man, start firing some counter missiles. Looks like we got 6 out of 12 hit right there. Looks like another 6 out of 12 hit on that side. Point defense guns don't really have the accuracy to do what I want them to do, and I don't know how far this thing's going to move on its turn because I don't get a preview. So I'll keep him where he's at for right now. I don't know if we want to bring up the big ships and get some more fighters out onto the field of play. Fighters are pretty fast. So let's get some more fighters on the field, and they seem to do a good job against gunships. We've got another ship that's joined the field. Something tells me this is going to be a stiffer target to knock over pretty soon. Let's come about. Counter missiles are not in range. Rejoin the fray down here. Oh, there's gunboats right there. I probably should have done something about that. If they point blank launch missiles on that craft, it's pretty much hosed. That will not be good. His point defense seems a little bit stronger. And a little bit more range than what we have going on right now. I don't think he actively has really anything that he can fire at that grouping though. I mean, a 35% chance to hit, it ain't nothing. They soaked it to the chin like a bunch of champs. Good for you guys. Not a single hit right there, that's unfortunate. That's real bad. Missiles are away. We do have the Invincible back here, but the Invincible's kinda trapped behind explosivos that are all over the place. Let's see if we can weasel our way into the IR field over here just to keep them nice and closed off. We already have missiles away on that side. We need to dodge the debris field over here. Those don't really damage those. We do have anti-fighter lasers though if we can get them into position. Little bit of damage to the gunboat group. Bunch of misses right there to play around with, too. Big laser out. Whole bunch of misses. Those guys actually moving, or is that them right there? That might be them right there. I don't know which one is the actual impact missiles and which one isn't. All right, so we got a fighter group here that's ready to roll. And we definitely want them to tango with these nerds if they can. Fighter group splashed a couple more. Hit them with the missiles. Down they go. All right, and there's one less threat on the field that we need to concern ourselves with. And you guys pull up for another firing position here. If we can drop, like, two gunboat groups in a turn... We should be able to get around this guy, and he chose to, like, sacrifice a whole lot of what he has right now in order to get after us, but there are a lot of missile groups on the field right now. Man, those gunboats are a liability, ain't they? I didn't realize they could dump missiles like that. That's actually kind of wild and crazy how many missiles they put out onto the field. Flackfield's eating them up a little bit, but I don't know if it'll be enough. Pull the fighters up. Strafing run. Another gunboat group down. We have a lot of point-blank mayhem going on over here. See if you can shoot down some of the missiles that are headed towards the fleet. You got a couple. It's better than getting a couple nothings. It does get a little bit messy in close quarters like that right there, too, where it's kind of hard to see what's going on. They got another gunboat into position. This is really unfortunate. Gunboats, man. They are 
a problem. Fighters, not too bad at shooting down missiles, though. Especially if we can thin out that group right there. They are firing missiles from everywhere, though. How many missiles? All the missiles. All the missiles in the world. I was hoping that the flak field would kill them a little bit better. Unfortunately, the flak field appears to have been a little bit of a booby play out here. We have another gunboat grouping out here with point-blank missiles coming in that way. Let's pull up alongside these guys. And let's just avoid any further missile spam on that side. I get the feeling we're going to have to soak a volley or two. These guys can't really do anything for another couple turns. So it may be time to re to take them back to mom, I think. Oh, buddy, we got a lot of problems out here, don't we? Well, it's five more missiles off of there. I'll take it. He's just sitting back there spamming gunboats. Yeah, they need to put a limited supply of ships on the carriers. Being able to infinitely manufacture gunboats in perpetuity, especially with how strong they are, feels like maybe one of those things we want to slow down on a little bit. Unfortunately, my range is hosed right now. We do want to get out of the way of these missiles if we can. I suppose I probably could have gone for point defense fire right there. Oh, buddy. It's heating up. But yeah, this is the Darkest Star. Hope you guys liked it. I cut this one a little bit longer than I was expecting. I've been playing for over an hour now, which means I must be enjoying it. But those are my thoughts, is that it gets a little bit hard to parse what's going on in intense open fire areas like this one right here. And then from there, the game plays a little bit slowly and has, like, a lot of sort of movement turns that you've got to deal with. Those are my two observations for right now. Light missiles on them, maybe. Might be an okay plan. Light missiles might work right there, too. I mean, it, it kind of comes down to the argument of should I be counter-missling right now? We have almost no chance to hit with point defense, so the fact that we even hit two of those is actually kind of miraculous. We are in the thick of it. It is getting hot and spicy in here. Go ahead and counter-missile that group. Kind of get them out of the air. Be another batch of fighters down here, too. I don't know what that guy's doing. He's just hanging out next to the giant asteroid. I feel like it was going pretty well until it weren't. You know what I mean? You feel me? 12% chance to hit from right there. We, have, we may have no choice but to actually like saddle one of these guys up close who's not under attack right now and try to go for the strike. Nothing really hit right there, unfortunately. Because they're overlapped, I can't particularly tell what I'm firing on right here. Yeah, it's kind of hard to say. Might have been better off just firing counter missiles into that absolute turd storm of pain that's coming towards us. We definitely need more people to line up on this thing, though. Yeah, go ahead and fire on the gunboat grouping. If you hit anything, I will be happy. That's pretty much the way that I feel about this right now. 36 missiles in that group. Go ahead and counter missile it. 36 out and away. Looks like we got some of them in there. This guy's being targeted up close by missiles, but he can't really do anything about it for right now. They really want that Janissary gone, but that kind of makes sense because the Janissary is my anti-missile craft. Ugh, we hit nothing right there. Big old wad of air. Okay, pull away from the missiles to at least buy yourself another turn or two before you get hit. They got a lot of stuff in the air right now. A lot of stuff. I suppose we'll pull forward. We do have the capital laser still ready to go. 
We also have heavy counter missiles ready to go. Which could potentially get those off him. Let's go ahead and do the heavy counter missiles real quick. Wow, the heavy counter missiles work. Okay. Uh, finish off that gunboat group. There should be a few less missiles in the air, I would hope. But close contact like this is big risky because I don't have time to, I guess, move up to there. Keep firing on the gunboats. Ugh, no hits, huh? Feels bad, man. Ripper Roonies. We only hit three missiles or four missiles out of the air, too. Tough one. That ship splashed, but it did do a lot of damage to the surrounding ships when it went down. I dig it. This seems like it's a very, very large-scale, Battlefleet Gothic-style turn-based game. We'll have to wait and see what they decide to do uh, when it comes to the campaign and how they're going to weaponize that and how they're going to make that enjoyable. I think that's kind of where we're at with it. Like, I think the campaign is what's really going to tie this thing together and make it feel like a cogent product. But... Another gunboat down. All right. Any world where there's less missiles being fired at me, I feel happier about because it looks like this Marauder soaked that last missile group and it knocked his armor down by about 20%, knocked his shields down by about 50%. And so dealing with this headache of just a batched loaded gunboat group is actually kind of a, a big problem. This guy is making headaches for me right now. Big headaches. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we were checking out Darkest Star, a game that still needs a lot of balancing and audio EQing and sound effects and stuff like that. It's very, very early on in its gaming adventure. But, oh no, they killed one of my units, dude. Not great. These little gunboats are a menace. They can move across, like, the entire battlefield in one turn, and then they can get up point blank with you and just launch missiles so close that you can't get, really get rid of them. And since the missiles are, like, guaranteed hit, but all your counter missiles and all your point defense only kill, like, four or five of them at a time, you've really got to dedicate some turns to shooting down missile fields. So those things are a big, big problem. Maybe I just haven't stumbled on the solution for how to deal with gunboats yet. I thought maybe the flak field would sort them out, but it does not appear to be the case that that worked. Uh, but this is The Darkest Star. I hope you guys liked it. Uh, we hung out a little bit longer than I intended with this title because I wanted to get into an actual big shootout. The game is available right now in the demo form. It's not out yet. Uh, but you can go play this exact same demo. It's got a couple different gameplay modes that you can play around with to get a feel for the way the combat works. And it definitely captures that sort of tabletop Battlefleet Gothic feeling, I guess. Like, what if Battlefleet Gothic was a turn-based game? Which it was in, in tabletop, but I never played that. I only played the PC conversions where it was all kind of real-time. And it does kind of have that vibe to it, I guess. Might be a little bit early to show this demo just due to the fact that there's, like, sound effects and things missing. But yeah, a game that has some balance passes and some things to take a look at before it's going to be ready for a final release. You spend a lot of time moving around on the in-between. Like, I had like 30 minutes of moving around that was edited out of this video where, like, no nothing happens. It's just you moving and the enemy taking a turn, you moving and the enemy taking a turn. So they're going to need a way to speed that up, too. Just because I don't really relish taking 10 turns in a row to move my fleet around in between engagements. Maybe some kind of, like, real-time mode when you're not actively engaged in combat or something. But I'll see y'all tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet. Thanks for hanging out. That's about all I got for you. Bye, folks.